Welcome to another episode of Chase Jarvis Live. We're coming at you from the garage. That's how they say it in the UK. We call it the garage in Seattle. It's a beautiful day. It's about 81 degrees outside. That's why I'm wearing shorts. So is my guest, my numero uno hip hop buddy fan, Sir Mixalot, is in the house and he also had shorts on a second ago. He just changed them into some uh, fancier stuff. But the point is, it's hot and beautiful in Seattle and we're coming at you with another show. The reason I was stretching out a few seconds ago, you might have seen me, is because we've got a big show for you today. Sir Mixalot, multi platinum, Grammy award winning hip hop artist, is in the house. And we're going to talk to him. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. I expect to see a lot of questions coming in from you because. As much as anything, the music industry and the photography industry have run in parallel for a long time. They've both kind of crashed and burned a little bit, and they've both been reborn. That's what's happening right now. That's one of the reasons I wanted Sir Mix on today. Another reason, because that cat's got a Facebook game, and he called me out. And so what I do? I called him out. And then he called me out, and then we went into a little battle. And uh, after the battle royale, we all decided that he was going to come here on CJ Live. And that's what we're about to do right now. We're going to bring him on here. Plenty of Q&A. We're going to talk about the stuff I just talked about. And then I'm going to take his picture because he's got a new album coming out. A lot of you don't know that, but now you do. We're going to get to play a track from it. We're going to get to see his video where he calls me out. And in shooting his next album cover, you are going to get a pick what he wears. You and I are going to fight a little bit about how we're going to light this thing because I have my preferences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're going to learn a few things and, uh, and you're going to watch live art being made. So join me, please. I expect to hear a lot of clapping, especially here via Twitter at hashtag CJ Live or hashtag Mix and Match, which is uh, the name of, of Mix's game. But please join me in welcoming my newest friend in the Seattle hip hop community. An old cat that I looked up to for decades as a young kid, and it's amazing to have him on the show here right now. So Mix a Lot is in the house. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Put that on you right there. Somewhere on your fancy shirt. Damn. I come in with with RF radiation and <laughs> shut all this shit down. That's how oh, I do shit. You, man, you changed. You walked in your own. Nah, cat. man, I, you know what? You told good. me to bring a bunch of gators, man. Well, but I'm, they said, you know, that alligators are a protected species. That's right. No, no animals. So we went harm. Cayman. <laughs> they got too many caiman running around, so we figured we'd knock a few off. No animals were harmed in the making of nope. Mix's wardrobe. None whatsoever. None these whatsoever. are actually, actually these are vinyl. That's right, vinyl shoes. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming to the show, man. Right on, man. It's a treat, and I think the way it came to uh, came to be is very interesting. It, is, it says a lot about internet culture in my mind, and it goes like this. You developed a game with Giant Thinkwell, which yeah. we'll talk about them in a short bit. And you made a little video, right? Is it, is it, yeah. Talk about the strategy. Well, this, this is how it happened. We had a list of people who were um, what, I call, what I call internet stars. No, man, you guys, are, you guys are legends, trust me. You'll see, like when you're an old guy, you'll be telling your kids, man, I used to tell these cats how to handle shit. I had an internet shit. television show back in 19. So when they said that Chase Jarvis from Seattle then I said, well, give me, a, give me a rundown of what he does, where he was, where he's been lately. And they gave me a rundown, and I just went in and just started talking shit. It worked. Yeah, we, it's, we were wondering, either we're going to get a response, or he ain't going to, he's just going to be like, this dude sucks, <laughs> one of the two. So I said, you know, I'd rather do that than be in the middle. Like, hello, Chase Jarvis. I am Mix-a-Lot, and I have a new game I'd like you to promote for me. You wouldn't have called me. You wouldn't. You're right. I wouldn't have. Right. Although and I... And you're a car guy. It's true. You knew about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, I have a weakness. Yeah, so I, I thought I'd get in then. Well, it worked. It was really effective. And um, actually, maybe we should play that. D'Artagnan, is there a chance you have that queued up? You do. All right. We probably won't be able to hear you talking trash here in the studio, but the folks at home <laughs> will. And we'll be able to see it on this big old By the way, these are right? not rented cars. These are all actual owners. Actual owner cars. No, the video that we're going to see is you talking trash to oh, me. Oh, you're playing the, the shit talking. It's right. Okay. Let's see it. Hey, yo, Chase. It's your boy, Mix a Lot. What happened, dog? What happened? Me, you, songs for eating and drinking, right? 
You send me an email and you tell me songs for eating and drinking is hot. You tell me about this best cam app and you downloaded two million. So I come down to songs for eating and drinking and I'm stuck outside. Music's blaring, people in there playing guitars, I hear chicks are running around topless, and I'm outside knocking at the door. As a matter of fact, one particular local artist came up and asked me to open the door for him and then park his car. Me and you got a holla chase. What's up? It's your boy Mix a Lot. I'm kicking it out here with Giant Think Well. You know Giant Think Well. If you don't, you will soon. We came up with this game. It's Facebook based. It's called the Mix and Match Game, where you would ask me questions and I'll answer them and see if you can figure out who I am. Sounds boring until you hear the answers. And I'm popping up constantly in the game, talking crazy. So it ain't one of these lazy games where the guy just signs his name to it, like a pair of shoes or something. We don't do that. Chase, let me in the door. Okay, let me in the door. God damn it. There you go. So I, like, was, I had my reporter head. <laughs> that was reporter. You know when reporters talk, they always like... Da, 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 da. Reporters cannot keep their head straight and they always have to hold their hand like this. They did a bobblehead of you too. Have the, have the, I, they did a bobblehead of me? I think so. Damn. Yeah, I think That's I a lot of head to put on a toy, dude. <laughs> No, but you're a very good shit talker and enticed me to, uh, to check out what it is that you were doing, yeah. uh, which we should, we should take a second and talk about that because there's a new era of socialization of stuff going on right now yep. and um, stars like yourself are becoming now part of internet culture and you're saying, mm, how can I kind of get involved right. and tell me the story behind the game, because you got a game now, it's called Mix and Match. Yeah, right. The game's called Mix and Match, and again, I'm not here to shamelessly promote, you know, I wouldn't want to put the, you know, logos and, right. and, and guys like, stuff like that. I don't do that kind right. of stuff. Don't you know, blame me. I mean, that's, somebody that's may. not classy. Right, right, I would never do it, and, and Giant Thinkwell is a cool company, and they have this what squid the, logo yeah, thing that's, that's really cool. Ask this. Yeah, it's a squid yeah. or something, right? But I chose not to wear the squid tonight, because I thought that would be extremely cheesy, um, therefore I, you know, I chose not to, not to wear it. Oh goodness! How did that get there, Batman? <laughs> <laughs> I've already been punked once on my own show. I'm such a whore. Um, so this is the giant Thinkwell squid. I'm thinking that is the giant Thinkwell squid, and the giant Thinkwell squid happens to be female. All right. And if you I've noticed, as you notice, when the little. giant Thinkwell squid turns around, the giant Thinkwell squid has an ass. A very nice ass. I will hit anything, man. I'm old now. You know what I mean? My standards have lowered. You know what I mean? All right. I want to get to what Giant Thinkwell is. First of all, I know what I know about Giant Thinkwell is they just took some VC funding here from uh, uh, the Madrona Group in Seattle, and they're helping celebrities connect with audiences. To yeah. me, that was interesting. I, I enjoy internet culture. They reached out to you, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And uh, you guys made a game, right? Yeah. They reached out to me. They they brought me in. Not only did they didn't just make a game and go, oh, mix, put your name on it. That that was what I didn't want to do. Got it. And and there's enough games running around talking about, do you think Chase is cute? You know, click yes and uh, come on. I didn't want that crap. There's only one button. Right. right. <laughs> exactly. So what we did was we just um, they brought cameras in. We recorded all kind of responses. Got it. And I'm talking crazy to people, and they let me do what I do, and they kind of incorporated that into the game. Yep. And when you get deeper you get things like a ride in my lamborghini which i could not drive today we'll talk about that later we're going to talk about that later yeah. embarrassing situation but so you can actually win stuff and interact with you yes right? you can win stuff and it's not and, like you get it and uh, that's the beauty of of what the music business has become right is that you can now interact where before it was kind of you were isolated behind the yellow rope so to speak let's go there because you know we're talking to primarily a uh, photography and film based create a lot of designers out there um, and, and a lot of music people as well, because I'm a big music geek. Yeah. Uh, and, and I know that for them to have this conversation be as relevant as it can possibly yeah. be, the thing that I want to know from you is, how is it different from when you were coming up in the hip hop scene, 80s, 90s, mm -hmm. and how is, it, how is it different from now? Because the photographers have undergone a similar shift, and I, why don't mm -hmm. you tell it like it was, Yeah and then tell it like it is, and we'll make some comparisons, and I'll take some questions, hashtag CJ Live. And, yeah, and, and I, you know, I, it's funny, because I, I love talking about this, because way back before anybody thought it would happen, I said it would happen. When we were all still doing dial-up, I said one day internet will be faster, and one day the whole business model will change. Um, so let's rewind a bit. Okay. Before, you had to be talented, but you really, 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 really had to be lucky. 
That's what it was all about, man. It was luck. Let's be real about it. There are guys walking down the street right now that would blow me away rapping. Um, so you had to get lucky and you had to become part of the gigantic corporate machine. So in other words, you, we had to go down and work the building at Warner Brothers. And when I say work the building, I mean like almost every couple of months because they fired people and brought people in so fast. And um, you force fed people what you wanted them to hear. Um, you would just take tracks. I mean, how many times back then did we hear a crappy track and it, we heard it so many times on the radio, we started singing it. Um, hopefully Baby Got Back wasn't one of those. <laughs> but uh, oh, man, but I anthem. mean, so, uh, the, the, the negative side of it is, well, the good side is once you were in, you, were, you could make way more money than you can now. The downside is that critics could define you and or, and or redefine you. So, you know, you have, let's say you have a hit record. In rap, when you have a hit record, too bad. You're gone after that, back then. Because what, what would happen is critics would just shred you, tear you down, and Got they'd it. look for the next, the next thing to worship and then tear them down. Got so it. critics had too much power, in my opinion. They had the power to destroy MC Hammer, to destroy Vanilla Ice, to, to a certain extent, destroy Public Enemy, which is blasphemy, in my opinion. Legendary. Um, yeah, because they started, they could just dish you. They had too much power. So magazines were way too powerful. Now, you fast forward to now, a new artist can now shape how he's viewed. A new artist can interact with his fans directly. Uh, and the press cannot get in between that, in that relationship. When the press does, the artist can go immediately online and go, that's bullshit, this is what really happened. And, and that is awesome. Also, Napster came along mm -hmm. and taught the industry's uh, lesson that I had been hoping they would teach him because you were forcing. Back then, we were trying to, we had a Baby Got Back single out. Okay. When the Baby Got Back single blew up, this is what they do. They yanked the single off the market back then. Why? Because they wanted you to pay 20 bucks to buy the album. Yeah, an album full of shit you didn't want to hear. You just wanted one or two songs, you know? And, right. and so in a way we were losing money because kids couldn't afford to spend 19 bucks on an album when they only wanted one song. Got it. But that was the kind of bullshit labels did back then. Then along comes Napster. Right. And they go, well, you know what? If you just want this song, get it. By the way, he also did this song. It was a much, much sharper, much more today business model. Right. And um, then Apple came along and stole that model. <laughs> And here we sit today. Now Apple is everybody's record label. That's right. Yeah, so. I, I find a lot of, let me, let me make some parallels yeah. if I can. So first of all, the fact that it was a limited few and then there was a lot of luck involved. That yeah. really was a lot of what the photography industry was about. Um, there were a limited few people. You had to go to the right schools, know the right people, have the right agents, have the right dealers, be in at the agencies. Now that's still always relevant. That all helps. And if you're into that scene, right. it's, then, then you're on the good side of the politics because there's still all politics. Let's call it what it is. But what is new is that you don't have to rely on that. It's the first mm -hmm. time in the history of the world that the creators of the art, in my case, pictures, films, whatnot, music videos, they can also be the distributors of their own work, right. either through iTunes or for free online to build awareness about who they are, what they right. stand for, what their music, their art, their, their pictures are. To me, that makes this the most exciting time in the history of the world to be a photographer. What do you think about how that relates to music. Does it, is it the most interesting time in the history of the world to be a musician? Um, because you can scale, you can share your work at scale. Mi I, it it, it, and it is and it's not. Okay. It, well, it is in the fact that you're right. You have the, the world is, you know, your oyster. You can do whatever you want to do. Got it. Problem is we seem scared to do it. And when I buy we, I don't mean photographers. Right, I mean right. I artists. I mean, we've gone through, well now, two and a half wars. Yep. Nobody's talking about it. Um, we had the first African-American president Nobody talks about it. You have the, you know, right now you have the left and the right completely parting this country right down the middle, tearing yep. it apart with all this, you know, partisan bullshit. Yep. Nobody's singing about it. So something seems wrong, but we have all this access to the fans, but we don't talk about anything. You know, today I went down and had a ham sandwich. <laughs> but I do want to ask you one question. Please, shoot, I have shoot. to, because Speaking first of all, ham sandwich reminded what you're me doing is really cool. I really want to do it, but I want to do it in my studio. Thank you. And start broadcasting live, because I think this is cool. But I remember the days when guys like Hype Williams okay. were getting a million dollars a video, and guys couldn't shoot video. Now, we're able to shoot a video like the Cars video I did for like, you know, 10, 12 grand. Yep. Why is that, and is it still profitable for you? I always wanted to ask that question. No, no, that's a, that's a great question. I think a lot of the folks at home are going to want to hear the answer to this. My belief is that, well, the reason, first of all, let's talk about a technology shift. The reason that it's 
it's 10 or 12 grand now is primarily because of the tools, right? Mm -hmm. The camera used to cost, to shoot a video like that, used to cost 100, 200 grand. And now, to get that look, that cinematic, short depth of field look that, that these big broadcast cameras could get. And now, with the advent primarily of the um, HD DSLR, which mm -hmm. are the cameras that, you know, the, the lens pops off the front, looks like a regular camera, now that those things shoot video, and beautiful video, mm -hmm. the game has changed. And those cameras run between one and five grand. And there are a lot of other ones. Uh, Red is a camera manufacturer. They're taking these, these cameras used to be hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars and they're making their 25 or something for the body and then the, with the lens kit, it's 50. So 250 for the camera, plus all the lenses, we're talking half a million bucks out of 99% of the artist's yeah. realm. You know, things 20, 50, 20, Five, three, one thousand wow. dollars. The D90 is a thousand bucks. Yeah, same so. thing with music too. I just, I was always curious. I mean, I'm just getting into the video side of it. Right. And uh, I, I got some company now trying to get me to get a camera. Some company called Ari or A R I oh, yeah. or something oh, yeah. like don't, that. Don't, don't listen to them. They're, you wouldn't like their cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Here's an idea. Here's an idea. You take that camera. Mm -hmm. I'll point it at you, and we can make some interesting stuff. There you go. I like Ari. They're go. nice stuff. You be the man. So, so. so I'm going to round that question out a little bit because it was also, and can you make any money, right? right. That was the second right. part of your two-part question. The answer is yes. It's a different model in the same way that your model used to have to, you know, have the agent went in, did the handshake deal, you got right. so many points, and then you sold a million records, and then they brought you up and tore you down. Now, it's a lot about being agile and unique and different and, and having a differentiating voice, a differentiating sound, differentiating visuals. I tell people you need to take a picture that no one else in the world can take. And the equivalent would be make a song that nobody else in the world can make. And the way you do that is primarily by thinking inside about what motivates you. When you said, right. no one's singing about this bipartisanism, no one's singing about these things. It's the same way visually. Now, there are less skilled people typically in the negotiations. So the right. negotiations are, they're more ramshackle. Unless you're on the good side of the politics, you've got, if you've got the internet and the good side of the politics, you're loaded. Yeah. And a lot of people, myself included, have worked really hard to try and make that happen. Um, but there are a lot of people who have, that don't have agents, don't have any of that stuff, and are still making a very, very good living. Right, right. Does it undermine the industry? That's a really hard mm -hmm. thing to say. It, it, it's growing the industry. More pictures are right. being used, taken, sold, licensed now than ever before. Yeah, I don't know if it undermines it as much as it, as much as it revolutionizes it. That's a better word. Yeah, that's how, kind of how I see the music business. But what I, where, I, where I do see a flaw is that there's a, a closing gap between professional and amateur. And what I mean by not that, not that the amateurs are necessarily catching up either. It's just that the quality, I'll give you an example. There's a, there's a program called Logic that a lot of people use to make music. Yep. And it almost does a lot of little things for you. Logic has a, something going on. It's like an internal compression, smooths things out. Got it. So it takes guys who really can't mix, and it makes them sound like they can. And what I've noticed is you take those same guys, put them in Pro Tools, and they, they're like fish out of water. Got because it. There is no, there's no way that technology teaches you to hear better. So I, I think that closing gap has somehow maybe diluted Sure. what our expectations are a little bit. I mean, look, look no, at what we do fair. now. We take MP3s and call that the standard now. Right. You know, where we all know that we should be 24-bit, 192 right. on everything. I know but we're that. not because Apple said so. And um, I, I see it in video, too. I mean, I'm looking at what you're doing. Right. And versus the last uh, web-based show I did, <laughs> you know, it was Don't a dude be. like with a, <laughs> with a handy cam, like, you know, focusing on a booger in my nose or something like that. So uh, the, the, the gap is kind of... It's true. Closing, not necessarily talent-wise, but what we think quality is, has been That's skewed true. by That's true. somebody. And there's a lot of there's a lot of talk online about that, especially in photography. What I would, the way I would articulate it, and I would do so poorly probably, but is there there are a lot more people in the market. There are a lot more right. photographers. There's a lot more noise. So the signal to noise ratio is really is really off. Right. But right. that's why you then go to curators and to people who help you find that stuff. Because yep. you pull up a search and it just has everything. And you don't want everything, you want the best shit. Right. 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 And so exactly. trusted sources, um, you know, I hope to be a trusted source. I think you hope to be a trusted source. One day. Um, yeah, and, and I think that is a new era of 
how we're going to get the goods rather yeah. than get the shape. Huh? I hope so, man. I hope I'm so. so. I'm going to the phones. There's a boy. <laughs> Please turn up the volume, by the way. Junkie asks. Um, people want to know what your favorite venue to perform in has been. <laughs> It's been uh, a while since you did a live performance, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't do them much anymore. I'm going to do some in September. Okay. Because um, I'm working on putting together a live band, doing some stuff. But primarily, I'm, I produced a couple of new artists, and I just kind of wanted to get out of the way, let them do their thing, and get okay. them set up. Mm -hmm. But uh, my favorite venue of all time, and keep in mind, I played Wembley Arena. You know, I played you some played huge Wembley? stuff. Yeah. That seems yeah, like I played Wembley Arena. people. Check this out. I played Wembley, and I brought out my drum machines, and I didn't realize they had a primary voltage difference. So I got some 120 volt and I go, this shit ain't going to work. So we ended up using instrumentals. This is no lie. Instrumentals off of a Walkman cassette deck plugged in with a little mini jack stretched out to some RCA mails going to the mixing board. At Wembley. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, because we didn't have the power thing, the Walkman was running off of um, AA batteries. So needless to say, our show went from 45 minutes to 20 minutes, that's and right. we got the hell out of there. Wow. That being said, though, Studio 47, a club that's no longer open, San Jose, California, best place I ever played. We used to play there so much, man, I almost, you know, I knew everything by heart. I knew what toilet flushed the best. I mean, Studio 47 San Jose was awesome. Speaking of Studio 47, um, this is the garage. We have two studios, this is the other one. I think uh, the songs for eating and drinking that you reference in your video, which we're gonna go to in just a second, that usually happens at a different studio. However, I'm gonna take your picture in a few minutes, which reminded me that if you retweet the URL that we're sitting at right now, chasejarvis.com slash live, or some bitly version of it, you can use hashtag CJ live, maybe even hashtag mix and match for your new game. Yeah. Include that, say something smart and witty, and I will pick at random someone to give a signed Polaroid, signed by yours truly and Sir Mix-a-Lot from today's photo shoot, which gonna, you know, commence here in 20 minutes or so. And that is gonna be worth something, not because it has my name on it, but because it has this man's face and his name. Multi-platinum Grammy award-winning artist. So retweet that stuff. I'll take a peek back here at the uh, oh, iPad and just two shakes of a lamb's tail. Before then, I'm gonna go back in time. Back in time. Back in time. I had an old beat up Mustang. I'm only 28. Don't go, don't go too far back. <laughs> we'll go back to when you were 18. There you go. Um, no, I had a beat-up Mustang <laughs> with two 15-inch woofers in the back. Yeah. And I used to roll around dropping your beats. And I want to know, I want to know a little bit about some of these cats that you sing about. Talk to me about Kid Sensation. Talk to me about, uh, gosh, Larry. He's the white guy. People think he's funny. Larry he's is the white investor. guy. I haven't seen Larry at age. I saw Larry about four years ago, and he looked the same. I was like, damn, dude, you still got the same five o'clock shadow, and it's 20 <laughs> years later. So Larry's still doing his thing. Cool. Um, Kid Sensation's name is now Kola Malik. He's still cool. doing music, doing his thing. He Great. was in real estate for a while. Mm -hmm. Actually, he was incredible at financing, which he was always smart. So he was, he was the only one of us that ever went to college. So we always tease him about that. We called him square, but we knew he could count better than us. So. <laughs> That's why you keep him around. Yeah, exactly. Can you count that, dude? Cool. And, what about um, some of the other people you reference in Posse on Broadway? And Maharaji, who's yep. been with me from day one. Um, he was the first member of my, of my clique, right? Nice. So he's still, he's, now he's doing his own stuff. You know, he has a couple of young artists he's working with. He's doing his stuff. And they're getting ready to, they were going to shoot a video at my house. And um, initially I said no. And then he told me it was like, you know, 12 naked chicks. I'm like, I think I could work that out. You know, I, I mean, the house is still empty. I haven't moved in it yet. So I think I could work that out. So Maharaji's still doing his thing. Good. Um, let's see. Let's say Larry. I mentioned Kid Sensation. I mentioned Maharaji. Who else did I mention in that song? Oh, my boy Kevin. He moved down to Vegas and dropped off the planet. Wow. Oh, he got married, man. And his nose is wide open. <laughs> so don't call the fat brothers no more. Stick with the sisters because she is fine. I must admit. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, well, it's good to, to, again, connect with you. I tried to connect with you. You referenced it in the video. I actually did send you an email and did invite you personally to Songs Feeding and Drinking. We had a hip hop. Look, if, if you don't know, hip hop is alive in Seattle. It's thriving. Uh, it is 
It is absolute hotbed. It is. And more shit Better than is ever. Yeah. More shit is happening right here, right now in Seattle with regard to the hip hop community than in any other city that I'm familiar with. I was in New York for the five weeks last month and a week. And people there were asking me about the hip hop here. People, the, the, the hip hop that I hear on the radio was hip hop from Seattle. So yeah. we've seen a, you know, in, in many ways a rebirth of that. And uh, I did a song for eating and drinking with my buddy Michael Hebb. We invited that whole community into my studio and everyone stood up and performed. And we tried to get you, man. Were you tied up that night? I think I was in La La Land, LA that is. Got it. Um, doing some stuff, but um, you're right. The hip hop community is thriving, man. I mean, when I, when I check out Cats, you know, Blue Scholars, Macklemore, yeah. E-Dog. Yep. I mean, there's, and the thing about it, we're all not sounding alike. There was a time, you know, when hip hop was born here, all of us are trying to be New York. Boom, boom, People had on hoodies and, and we're in backpacks and we trying to use fake New York accents and Seattle finally evolved and, and a lot like our rock community, it started to be comfortable with who it was. Yeah, there's a lot of references is. to the 206, which is our area code. There's a lot of references. Sickness. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and you mentioned a few folks. You mentioned like Macklemore. And how different does Macklemore sound from, from Blue Scholars, uh, Common Market? And I don't know, what's Larry, yeah. what's Mizell doing right now? Yeah, Blue, Blue Scholars, Common Market, those cats are more into the, um, it's, it's about the message. Now, Macklemore is too, but Macklemore is a, what I like about him is that he has totally figured out this whole viral thing, man. Yeah. Oh, he's I'm going to give you an job. example. He did a show down at the, uh, at the show box. And he invited me to come down and do Posse on Broadway. I said, I'll go down, sure. what the hell? So before we get on stage, he says to a sold out crowd that he did, I think he sold out three times yes. in a week. Yeah, go back. I think only Pearl Jam did that, right? Yeah, and Presidents. Yeah, presidents so he told his crowd, um, this next guy I'm gonna bring up, I want you guys to tweet right now, tell everybody, check it out, blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm serious, it was like, an army, everybody whipped out their iPhones and they were like, I'm like, what the hell, man? But that's the education for a I'm guy like, like you, right? Wow. That's the, that's the new school, educating the old school and then the old school having a yeah. chance to come be yeah, you better, Yeah, you again. better change the, the business model. Yeah, because the day you just calling your publicist talking about, you know, tell all them cats to go left, not right. That don't work. That doesn't work and anymore. And it blew my mind that night. Um, I checked Twitter and everybody was, I'm like, wow. I mean, he's got it figured out. It's the power of the social machine, and that's happening right now um, while we're talking. I, I see a lot of comments on Twitter about the, the interesting parallels between music and, yeah. and, and photography. And where are you going from here, man? Well, talk to me. I understand. So we're going to shoot some, uh, cover out for your next, some cover art for your next album. Yeah. And is this something you're cutting at home, right? You've got a studio in your Oh, place. yeah, i got a studio at home. And um, when I get ready to polish off the album, I'm gonna do what you're doing right here. I'm gonna go live in the yeah, studio. We'll have you back. Should we have yeah. him back? We should have him yeah, back. Have him back. You guys knows. should come down there and shoot. Bring it. All I need is an yeah. invite. Are those same girls still there, maybe? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get you the invite. <laughs> I'll give you the same invite you gave me. Oh, all right. All that right. was the invite he gave me. <laughs> but I just came in the door anyway. No, no. Just joking. Where are you going with this? Where are you gonna, you're gonna pop a new album? And, and one of the things that I liked when we were talking about how we were gonna shoot you, it was out of, you're not coming back trying to make money. You don't need money. No. You're not coming back trying to be like you're 20 years old anymore. No. It's a love for music, right? Yeah, what, what trips me out, man, when I look at a lot of cats, veterans in the game, is how many of them are trying to say something that's really not them. So they talk about, you know, right, mobbing from club to club. Dude, you're 40. You should either own the club, be playing there, or get your black ass out, one of the three. You know, um, so... I, I wanted to do one last record, and I'm doing it because next year will be the 20th, year, 20th anniversary of Baby Got Back, right? Got it. So I'll drop one more record called Done Forgot About Mix. But I wanted it to be, and I, we talked on the phone about this, I wanted it to be, you know, you use this analogy that I've been in the end zone before. Yep. I don't need to do a victory dance, I don't need to do the splits, I don't need to moonwalk. Um, so I wanted it to be mature, but still fun. So you have some songs on there where I'm just outright pissed, and some songs where I'm being typical mix a lot the borderline sexist, horny bastard. Except for like I was saying off, <laughs> off camera, my standards have come down. Wow. Down, when you get older, man, you can't, like <laughs> this young girl I'm producing, Tamika Williams, right? Fine as hell, she's up here, right? I did see Tamika. I've been working on her album forever, trying to impress her, man. I done drove her in a Lambo, she's like, Shh. I done done this, done that. So I sent a scout out, a scout would be an ugly woman to ask the pretty woman what she thinks of you, right? I sent a scout out, talked to Tamika, she's like, 
did you like the Lamborghini? She said, yeah. Did you like the Ferrari? She said, yeah. You like the studio? She said, yeah. Did you like him? She said, hell no. <laughs> so all that work for nothing, man. So I said, you know what? I got to bring my standards down. Tamika's like a dime piece, right? Yep. So I need like a nickel. Just give me a nickel, a couple pennies. As long as it ain't wooden, I hit that now. <laughs> I wouldn't hit that before. I go there now, man. Hey, man, with times that have changed, you know? Yeah, Tamika in introduced me to a beast last week. I'm like, is this what you think of me? This chick was like, how are you doing? Oh, my. My name is Brenda. I was like, damn. <laughs> so, I was, so I had to bring my standards down. So is this, so is your, as your standard for music dropped with your standard no. for the, no? Standard no, that's the problem. This, this is, now here, herein lies the problem. Okay. You and I both know this. When we were kids listening to whatever, NWA. Yep. Remember what our parents said? That ain't even music, boy. Right? Yep. I'm trying to stop from saying that. I'm trying, when I hear songs, I swear, man, when the lyrics sound like something I did in 1984, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, went to the store with a nigga like me. What the hell? I mean, I, I swear, man, I, I'm trying not to complain about it, but that is a sign I like, of getting I, old I love rock him. You know what oh, I mean? Amazing. I, mean, I love, B, I love yeah. Eminem. He got skills. I love yep. Tech Nine. So when you hear a cat that's making money with an accent and slang, but no skills, his lyrics are pretty garbage because he has no idea what's going on around him. It's all about him and his crew. When you hear that kind of stuff, sometimes you turn into the old man, right? So I get around a young cat. I'm Boy, that, that dude ain't got no skills. I remember back when Rock Kim said, and I'm like, oh, don't do that. Yeah, don't, don't do, do that. that. Yeah. So well, I have I'll to like you accept it. I'll call you out if you do that. Yeah. You have to respect what's coming up. You got to just deal with it, shut up, try to understand it, or move on, find something else to do. With that, I want to, hey, D, is there a chance we have his, some audio of his new album, Don't Forget About Mix, queued up? I would love to let the world listen to a snippet of it. We ain't going to play the whole thing, so I'm going to pull yeah, it down. Kick, kick, uh, kick that first verse a little kick bit. Kick the first verse. And we might not be kicking it here because we turned the volume down because oh. of the uh, audio stuff, but the internet will be kicked, as they yeah. say. And it was one of those songs I meant what I said. Good evening. You meant what he I'm said. You heard it here. This Drop just that, in dude. from the CUM newsroom. Former one-hit wonder rapper Sir Mix-a-Lot was seen earlier today on a downtown Seattle street corner holding a cardboard sign. It read, we'll rap for food. It was reported that practically unknown artist was wearing, quote, very worn clothing and smelly sneakers. More updates every half hour on the hour or in the hour. I'm Dick Frost from the CUM Newsroom. Y'all done forgot about me. Back from the financial dead, paid the feds. I even sold the old Enzo redhead. Pushed to image to extremes and like cream, I rose to the pinnacle without thug teams. Got paid without the crime blotter. Oh, you had chicks too, but mine was way hotter. Plus, I never lied to kick it. I'm from an era where a brother put it down, no need to scare her. Black Carreras and circular driveways. While you did clubs, I did bull runs on highways. Oh, you never heard of bull runs. Your exotics in the house, while mine is driven son first a ball on a james bond level i kept them shaking not stirred lamborghinis in the curves the first to work furs on a street curb no shame in my brain articulating my words you were the one paying bills with money orders and i was the one with the team of black lawyers you was the one claiming guns you never popped and i was the one scoped up with 308 shots you was the one with the sinister image and mine wasn't an image it was simply spinach and you were the one playing chicks like a trick and now you want to diss y'all I forgot about me. The first to do the studios in house. I kept my publishing when brothers are selling out. I flipped two cribs and I buy this market 200%. Yeah. No, I was just on <laughs> one. I, I, I've been wanting to say that forever. Actually, I didn't want to do that song. Like, E Dog is like the dark side of me, right? Yeah. So, E Dog comes by the house. This, you know, he's, I can't say the words he usually says, but um, he's like, dude, let me see. How can I say this? Let me see if I can do that. Let me see if for I can a, edit E-Dog. This is my E-Dog edit. If you're at work. You're when mom. I'm sitting in the studio and E-Dog comes okay. over, right? I'm thinking of doing a song that's a pleasant, makes a lot of song. And he's like, man, F these MFers. You need to tell these MFers where you done been, homie. Blah, 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 blah. F, 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 mother. I love cussing and I'm biting my tongue right now. You're doing a great job. But I, I, I people at work can still am, participate. Yeah, people at work can still participate because F is not a bad word. It's true. Even F asterisk asterisk K is not a bad word. True that. I type it a lot. 
so I know, although I got blasted about it. But he wanted me to say something that I've never said um, because I've never really been into bragging on accomplishments. But right. he wanted me to basically, he said, dude, there's a lot of cats, not new cats either. Right. These are old school cats who oh, yeah. I have been knocking you on the slip trying to get away with it. And they somehow think you got some bitch in you because you did Baby Got Back. And he said, you need to let them have it. So, so I you got did. at them. Yeah. And it feels good, right? Yeah. Because a lot of the cats I was claiming gangster back then, I used to tour with them. And I'm like, this dude ain't no gangster. He's a straight <laughs> bitch. You see half of them in the club, man, somebody flinching, they jump under the table, you know? It wasn't strapped, no guns. I'm like, Ooh. Wow, you just say a lot of, I mean. There I, are no guns at Chase Jarvis Live either. Right? Nah, last, last time I checked. The gangster era is over. <laughs> Although I heard you're gangster when it comes to taking pictures. I'm a little intimidated. That's true. That's and true. Like, we, pull, we pull some shit together. Hold your head steel, punk. Um, all those are true. I like the track. I got, it's, it, it is, it's different than, it's, it's not overly playful, but there's some play in it. Yeah. Like I think talking talking some smack and trying to motivate the industry, I think is cool. Yeah. You have a reference to your exotic car collection in there, yeah. which we should go look at that, right? Oh, that's right, you <laughs> forgot to bring it. I told the world we were gonna get to look inside and take a ride in one of his many exotic cars. This one was gonna be the Lamborghini. I do like cars. We're not gonna ride in Lamborghini today, but you know what? Yeah. That was kind of one of the conditions, so I'm holding you to it. Yeah, I, I, well, let me explain something to you which is, this is embarrassing, but okay, I'm going to no, go So every Saturday, wearing, we go out to this place called are. Redmond Town Center, right? Yep. Redmond Town Center, and we go out, a bunch of exotic cars. Like, we had 160 on Saturday. So I drive the Lambo out there, we kick it, then we go out to have a little lunch. Sure. I get ready to leave. <laughs> now, keep in mind, you already got people, like, in little Mini Coopers laughing because they can't stand us anyway. They figure, you know, he must be insecure right. about something to be right. like this. Yep. It wouldn't start, man. So now, check this out. All my exotic car buddies left me. Oh. Right? You're thinking, okay, they're gonna help me out, right? They're gonna, right. They're gonna come. Nah, because they didn't want to be seen jumping a Lamborghini, so I had to get a taxi cab. They even See? have taxis in Redmond? Yeah, exactly. That, that taxi had to come from the hood somewhere. <laughs> so I had to have a, get a taxi cab. And he jumped me, and I got it home. The battery's holding no current. Got it. All so right. Excuses I, aside, but I'm, yeah. I'm going to hold you to it. We're taking a ride. But I will ride. come back. Okay. I will be back. I'll be back. And I think I'm going to order a 458, too. So Ooh. I'm considering. Wow. You've, been, uh, you've appeared in several music videos. I've been in a few. Yep. Been in a few. Do you remember any of the directors that you worked with? Do you remember some talented cats? Or was that really an afterthought Let's see. back then? Did that come through? all of your, your people, as The you only say. one I remember, I, I wanna say Adam, is it Goldstein or something, that did Baby Got Back. I remember him because we had a huge argument. When I walked out on the set, and this is the problem I've always had with Baby Got Back, is that people who aren't from that culture, yep. and I'm not talking about black, I mean hip hop culture, yep. when, they, when they hear you singing about butt, they think ho. I walk in, he had all the girls, I'm talking about, eyelashes out here, they were dressed like straight hookers. Boots up to here, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not what this song is about, homie. That's not where we're going. We had a huge argument. Oof. He said, when I think butt, I think prostitute. I and said, and when I hear you say that, I think dumbass. So we need to pull <laughs> back, you're getting paid, so you need to change this up. So we had to go buy him some clothes at the mall. Wow. Because I was gonna have a, you know, it's like I'm doing a video praising sisters and they all gonna be dressed like hookers. Nah, talk about black exploitation. But that was the 90s, young, you know. You worked through the industry that. industry was still tweaking. But so. I like that you were giving them something empowering. And I've, I've yeah. read a lot of interviews of you talking about, like, respecting a different yeah. body type. And I got knocked for it. I remember we went to uh, University of Nebraska and did a show. And I got kind of boycotted for a little while. But I just said, hey, let's debate it right now. So we just did it. And they pulled some of the signs down. Wow. Because a lot of people think the song is just, well, you, they say you reduce a woman to a body part. You know, what about intelligence? What about this? And they're right, but Baby Got Brains wouldn't have been very interesting. So, <laughs> ass as it is. There you go. Spoken like a true professional. No, no, no. <laughs> T but uh, tell me something. Do you have chrome cons That's on? right. That's the shit. That's right. You gotta get me some of those. Well, I don't, I don't even know what that animal's called that you got on your foot there, but I know it's uh, It's a vinyl caiman with a little vinyl ostrich on the inside. <laughs> they feel good. Um, so but I'm, I'm gonna go back and say, 
that that's another, I think, another change uh, in the industry is that, so you can remember one of the directors who directed one of your, one of your uh, multi-platinum Oh, and Bob Kubalis. Video. Bob Kubalis is a director of uh, One Time's Got No Case. Well, and that was my homeboy. Okay, there How you do go. I remember him? Because he also was the camera guy on my show I did on Playboy. You had a Playboy show? Ooh, you didn't know? Is that? Man, I did a show on Playboy called Hot Rocks. Ooh, I remember our first episode, man. Heather Hunter. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I can't cuss. Let me say it. Heather Hunter was teaching me how to properly Take eat, care of business. Eat red meat like burgers. amazing yeah like burgers yeah and right steaks. on the couch just like that wow and i'm interviewing her and she's like you have to no oh, never <laughs> amazing yeah i love that show but i'm gonna go back to the director thing so he was a cameraman on that i'm sure he had a lot of stories the director but was eric middleman it it is now an era where musicians and photographers and filmmakers yep. collaborate on their yes. videos like yeah, they've do. all got buddies and so there's a lot of cross discipline that's what this show's about there's not only photographers sitting in this chair. Right. You know, here's a legendary multi-platinum Grammy award-winning hip-hop artist that we're sharing with the, the people out there. The interdisciplinary thing is something that I think is the most interesting that's going on right now. I'm shooting, I'm a photographer, but I'm also a, a director. I, mm -hmm. I'm doing those things. And now all of the friends that I'm collaborating with, they're all in my, in my circle of friends, as you right. will, or peers. And it's all under kind of uh, the umbrella of just general creativity. Right. It wasn't like that back then. There were specific people. I understand that oh, your yeah. agent knew that. the. It and is bad. that something that, like, when you stood on stage with Macklemore, and you saw the power of Twitter, did that inspire you at all? Does that say, oh, did that man. tell you that we're in a new era and that you can you can actually benefit? Yeah. Can you reinvent yourself? Is that a goal? Well, I don't know if you. I don't know if I would call it reinventing okay. myself. It would be. Getting allowing people to know who I am because keep in mind prior to now everybody thought that all I could do was you know grab at asses and rap yep. nobody knew I engineered my own stuff nobody knew I produced my own beats um, they didn't know anything they don't know I, you know I'm heavy into electronics I'm starting a company um, that's dealing with that kind of stuff some interface devices and stuff like that nobody knew that Got it. but the internet gives you the power to shape how you're viewed. Not mm -hmm. necessarily reinvent. I think when people reinvent sure. themselves, that means evolve, you were, yeah. Yeah, that you means evolve. you were ashamed of what you were. Sure, no, I'm which, evolve, yeah. that's a better word. Yeah, good, and, good uh, and, and you're right about early, the early days in this game. Directors then, videos were something they did to climb to movies. Now you meet directors who do movies who can't wait to do music videos. It's, it's just a yep. totally different thing than it was then. Back then you had to beg a director. Well, that's one of the things that I, I, I there were a lot of photographers from uh, an, an older era that when I was coming up uh, that talked a lot of shit to me because I started showing behind the scenes videos. Right. And I did it because I was sharing and with the ideas of collaborating and, and I was in some parts, in some ways vilified. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute, sharing is bad? Like, yeah. wait a minute. And, and now the, a lot of that, that same um, guard, that same era are reaching out and saying, hey man, sorry about talking shit earlier, yeah. like what you're doing. How can I, you know? <laughs> In other words, turn around. That's, that's what you mean. Said. I don't want it to sound like that, but it's mostly, uh, hey man, I missed that bus. And, yeah. and so again, reinvention is, is a bad word. I like, I like your take on that. It's, a, it's an evolution, so. Yeah, I know my, my manager, um, in, in, in all fairness, was talking about this way before I was. I mean, I got what the, the power of the internet, but he kept telling me, I'm like, dude, nobody cares, you know, how I take a dump. Nobody cares how I do a song. And he was like, they do. You know, mm -hmm. they want to see the inner workings. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't really get it. And then when you start watching other people do it, it makes sense. Well, and there's also, a, like, it doesn't mean that you have to show people the shitty stuff. You can show them the nice stuff. Right. And you can show them, not necessarily you're taking a dump, but. Uh, you never know. Yeah, I'm sure it's Taking a cards. dump can be artful. <laughs> I'm serious, man. <laughs> The point is, is that there's a spectrum of things that are interesting to share and, and that yeah. I, I, I do the same thing. I, I follow a lot of people and pay attention to what they're doing and hopefully that they do the same to me. Or, and right. and the, the what can be shared um, doesn't just have to be the press release and that's what I like. And that's one of the reasons this show is so casual. It's one of the reasons that you know we have cameras that film behind the scenes and you can see just a bunch of people, everyone's looking like they, through their stuff. Camera right guys now. on yeah. camera guys. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I tell you one thing I do like, I, I, went, I went to your site and what was really cool 
is that you have a video about your workflow, mm -hmm. how you do what you do on the run. Yep. And that to me was everything. To a guy like me who's trying to get into it, it was mm -hmm. like, wow, I was serious. I watched it like five times. I <laughs> just had a conversation. Yeah, a yeah. friend of mine named, named Tim Ferriss, he's an author, um, number one New York Times bestseller, it did a book called For Our Work Week and uh, For mm -hmm. Our Body. And Tim, this is going to you. I'm gonna have you sitting here in the not too distant future. Um, he is also fanatical about photography. There's so many celebs that are, are moving into photography that my phone's ringing and it's really cool people on the other yeah. end of it. Um, and videos like the one that you're referencing there, the workflow video, are they're really helpful. And that's what they're there for. They're there for, because we're doing the work anyway. It takes us a little bit of time to put together a video, but if we can help. See, but it makes sense, see, because I, I never looked at it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if you thought like I did, you would be like, who cares about this stuff, right? But we do, so now I right. see that and I go, okay, so the mm -hmm. studio does matter. And I noticed that yeah. a lot of the stuff that you see Avid and companies like that put up as far as uh, working in the sound, yeah. audio, doing audio in the studio, are, they're so way up here that the average kid is disconnected by, you know, paragraph two. Yep. Because they're trying to be technical because they're trying to talk to professionals, right? right. But I think if somebody just broke it down in layman's terms and got in the studio and just like, man, crank that shit up. Believe me, when that shit hits, Max, that compressor will shove that shit down and that vocal will be fat like a mother. Oh, I can't say that. You can. Fat as hell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so that, that kind of stuff is cool. And I, that, that workflow video you did made sense to even me and I know nothing about that stuff. Love it, so. love it. And Again, that, that is the, the power, that's the new era, and yeah. that's, that's what I'm trying to represent. Uh, I like your take on it, uh, and I think you're four into this gaming with, with the folks at, at uh, Giant Thinkwell, which is, I'm gonna turn to that just for a second. All right. Um, is it to connect with your fans? Is it to have fun? What's Both. Uh, uh, yeah? Both, and, and just... A lot of personality, and a lot, I'm yeah. gonna ask you a couple of the questions that I was asked when I played it last night. I got asked a question that either I misinterpreted it when I originally answered or the person did, but I answered it differently. And he was like, that's not what you said in the game. I'm like, oh, oh, uh, shit, we change as we me. get older, you know? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a month older. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go to, so mix and match is the name of the game. Yes. People ask you questions and you answer and as you get the right answers you move to the well, game well the game asks the question and then you have to try to predict or try what to guess you, what i yeah, said what, what you i said. would say yeah so one of the ones that i missed this morning was uh zipper or button fly yeah what the hell did i say let me think in some cases i would say zipper let me see this is what it i i was calling adam and kyle on the phone I'm like dude sure. these questions man i could go either way <laughs> button fly it's secure. Yeah. But zipper is quick, man. I know. I know. Zipper is like, I, I answered gotta button hit it. Fly. I answered button fly for the security reason, and I was told I was wrong that you said the zipper. So I'm, I'm not going to let you off the hook on that one, but I am going to want to know um, sexting or edible underwear? Sexting. Hmm. Definitely. Edible underwear doesn't necessarily mean you ate them off of a woman, right? It's true. And this is why this, this one says, do you prefer chicken breasts? or chicken thighs? Thighs, baby. Dark meat, juicy, succulent. <laughs> you know, I think it's all the, it's all the same, man. I, I like sure, sure. food, you got a, butts. You got a drop top there on you your hoopty, or you got drop trow? These are from Did your you own game. Did you say hoopty? Well, I didn't say, I, I wasn't referencing. wasn't in the game, was No, it? no, no, you said drop, drop top. top on. Like, I'm thinking you're on. Oh, probably doesn't. drop top. Yeah. Because drop trow, even though it sounds sexy, <laughs> drop top gets more drop trow. Got it, got it. Yeah. Okay. Got to think down the line. This is on your philosophy. Fight the power or don't rock the boat. Fight the power. There you go. Definitely. The public enemy reference from earlier. Smart ass or jackass? Smart ass. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah jackass has pissed me off. Man. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go to the phones, as we say in the internet. See, now he left out one question. Uh-huh. <laughs> My mom's watching, man. The answer is the answer is nine inches. <laughs> Figure out the question. Doo, size doo, of, doo, size doo. of my shoe. <laughs> I wish. No, no. Um, we, so a lot of folks are are asking where your favorite place to play is. You already dropped that one. Yeah. Um, let's see. God, there's a lot of questions here. Do they mean play like concerts? Or do they mean play like have fun? 
I think they mean play at concerts. Okay. What's yeah. your favorite automobile of your exotic cars? Oh, that's easy. My Lamborghini LP640, man. The LP640. For now. 640. For now. I've, I'm making changes. Okay. I sold my 612 Ferrari, and I think I'm going to get the Lamborghini Aventador LP700. Have that and a 458. And I'm, and I'm cool. I'm cool. I've, Brent, thin, I've thinned out the herd a little bit. All right. Yeah. All right. That's expensive stuff. Bryn Vincent wants to know, of all the advancements made during your career, from, what do you say, when do you call your career starting, 80s? Yeah, started okay. in the 80s. And 80s till, uh, I don't know. I don't know, mid to late 90s. Okay. Yeah. What do you think, generally speaking, the music holds for, or the, the, the industry holds for its current musical heroes? Is it going to see the same innovation levels? Is it going to see new, bigger innovation levels? In, oh, in I, tools I, for artists. Oh, tools for artists meaning... Yeah. Computers, Pro Tools. Oh, okay. Like, That's what I thought you meant. Yeah. I, no, it's going to grow exponentially. I mean, the, the hard part we had in my era was half of the guys that came up on two-inch reel-to-reel did not want to go to Pro Tools, did yeah. not want to go to digital audio because, yes, it did have a little bit of a – it was a little too bright. There was some stuff missing in Got the it. mid-range. But the thing that cracks up about guys with tape that they never admit – Tape actually was somewhat distorted, which is why we think it sounded warmer. That warmth was distortion. Example, take an 808 kick drum. I was just going to Listen to it on your PA. Boom. And record it on two-inch tape. It goes boom. Always. I don't care what the player was. So is that accurate? No. So it was so in answering the question, it took forever for those analog guys to come to digital. Mm -hmm. But now that they are digital, the quality of digital is just, I mean, we've gone from basic little 44, 116 stuff to 192, and I just heard about something at 384 or some weird number. Um, so it's never going to stop. I mean, I think now that all of us are in the digital domain, the growth is going to be every two years will be the equivalent of eight, nine years in the old era, I think. Cool. A lot of people saying they love the honesty. James Carr just said, love, love the honesty, man. I appreciate it. Um, Talk to me for a second. Well, there's also someone that said, we're bringing out their injured Walkman wearing punk ass kid from the old school days. Huh? Brian Benteen, you used to wear Walkman? So did I. Oh. So did I. Did you have this man's beats in there, Brian? <laughs> yeah, I had a Walkman. You know, love. Walkman were like, you know, the iPods back then. Um, well, what I like is a lot of people talk right now uh, about as these are coming in pretty quickly about you keeping it real. I think the idea of you not trying to be something that you're not, that you're not 20 no. years old, that's, that's really, I think that's important. And that's going to get a lot of respect in this new, this new kind of push that you're doing. I well, guess. you know, I'm, I mean, the thing, I'm thing with hip hop is, I mean, I get when a cat comes out, he's 20 years old, he's got it's his hard. new record and he's, you know, he's got his jewelry. He's got it. Cause I did the same thing. So mm -hmm. I'm not knocking those cats, but you had jewelry, but when a dude is, uh, <laughs> but when a dude is, my age, been in the game this long, you don't have to do that anymore. You know, and give back some knowledge. Talk about what you've learned, talk about what you've seen, and it makes it a little bit easier to go forward. But fake is never something I was good at. That's what's cool about this era, is that before you just knew that was the butt guy. That was all everybody knew, because so, I didn't right. do a lot of interviews, I didn't right. do a lot of television, never got to Saturday Night Live, never did David Letterman, never did Jay Leno, I did do Arsenio. Um, but now I can get in and talk, and people can hear something other than the typical bullshit you hear from a lot of rap artists. Well, that's one of the reasons you're on the yeah. show, man. Yeah, you got to be 100% real, because like if it. I ain't, Twitter will. That's right. They'll let you know. Mess me up. They'll be like, I seen a dude down at at, at Skipper's eating some old fish. He was there for the the dollar days. Because <laughs> you you might catch me doing that. I ain't gonna lie. I go a happy hour at Red Robin, man. I will eat the five dollar wings. And I know people think it's silly because I drive up in the bands and they're like, come on, really, seriously? But I'm like, it's happy hour, man. Hey, I want to be with my people. That's right. Yeah. And me and Tamika going there right after we leave here. Tamika? Yeah, That's Tamika, right. she, she's a good girl, man. She can sing her ass off, first of all. She's about the size of that bottle, but she seems like here. she's my size. You, ever, you know, like that, she got a fat woman voice. Just, whoa! I mean, just, I mean, the first time I heard her sing and she did all this power, and then after she got done, she's like, well, did you like it? 
<laughs> like, God damn, what are you just yelling at me five seconds ago? So anyway, but she's like the good side. E-Dog, my dark side, Tamika's my good side. Out of sight is like, we're here, me and Out of Sight. We always, well, those are my artists in case you were wondering. But Tamika's, she be watching my stuff. Like I buy another car, she's like, you know, I don't think you really should spend that kind of money. <laughs> That's no, I'm serious. That's what she'll say. Of course, now we had Neiman Marcus looking at shoes. Mm -hmm. She'll be like, "Well, these are only a thousand bucks. You could get these for me, and I could do some pictures with Chase." That she she justifies Mm -hmm. the expense, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm playing sugar daddy, but I ain't getting no ass. No, a lot of people at home. A lot of people at home uh, do that to their spouses. They want a new camera. They those things are not not cheap. Not cheap. So. We're taking lessons here. If you're just tuning in, we're live here on Chase Jarvis Live with legendary hip-hop artist Sir Mix-a-Lot. And he's doing a good job of relating the way that the, the, uh, the music industry has changed uh, in parallel with the photography industry. And there's a lot of similarities. We've got a lot to learn because I think in many ways they've uh, done a good job of harnessing some business models that we have yet to learn from. Um, in just a few minutes now, we're going to take a break. I'll probably go back to the phones one more time. And we're gonna, well, you, we're gonna pick out some wardrobe for you. Remember, what we were talking about there's a photo shoot that's going on immediately following this section of the show. I'm gonna walk over there and pick out a wardrobe with you with the people on Twitter. Okay, we're yeah. gonna ask them what they want you to wear. Hashtag CJ Live or at Chase Jarvis. Um, and what's actually we gotta get your Twitter handle. You are the real mix. The real mix because somebody else had mix a lot. Somebody else had Sir mix a lot. Bunch of fakes. Fakers. Bunch of farce. But I. Uh, so we just did the real mix and cool. I just I just really got started tweeting like a year and a half ago, a year and three months ago. And I don't do it as much as I should, but when I do it, I do it in streaks. You know, so it's like I get like Twitter constipation yep. and then I get the Twitter runs. And then I just hold off for about a week till I have something else to say. All right, well, I'm, I'm sure you'll have a bunch of new followers now. Uh, and remember to check out the game. I haven't gotten no Twitter ass yet. Really? Yeah, everybody talk about, man, you can get ass on Twitter. I haven't got nothing yet. I had this one chick try to get at me through a private message, and her picture, perfect. Right? She was like, five, eight, pow, pow. Then we got off onto the, my iPhone, and I said, send me another picture, and it was like, pow, 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 pow. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, I'm fat. She's fat. I can't, I can't hit it if I can't reach it. There's too much gut here. <laughs> so I got all this gut and she got all this gut and we trying to meet in the middle. There's only one position that works. That is straight up. Yeah, I'm just real talk. So Things you learn at Chase Jarvis Live. If you ever get fat, Chase, you'd have to give up the fat women, homie. This does not come for free. Yeah. yeah so he, he likes fat women because he can still do them. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a treat having you on the show. I got a couple more questions. I want to know, what's your, um, what's your view of photographers? So. I've asked plenty of I celebrity friends. Yeah. That's I, I was, yeah, I've asked plenty of uh, fancy friends. I got some celebrity friends, and I, and the the thing ranges. The, the answers range from huge ton of respect to I want to be one to yeah. they're just paparazzi to do they even have a job anymore? I mean, they're, they're like the the range is massive, and so I'm kind of surveying some of my fancy friends. Yeah, and uh, and what's what is what is the world? I mean, this is an important message for you all to uh, to. Here. Well, you know, from my perspective, yeah, because, because can, of what I do for a living. You've been real the whole show, so don't yeah, get to me, you know. paparazzi. At, I'm, I'm, I've never been that star, right? So I, I think we had one run in with TMZ, and I just basically told them all kind of foul stuff about myself, so they didn't have anything to talk about, and they just left. So that was, I, I'm not worried about paparazzi, but photographers, in my opinion, are ten times larger than they were pre-internet, and what I mean by that is. Because there's so many pictures of us floating around now that we take on our own that look like shit that when a photographer touches it, touches you, you become something bigger. And that has everything to do with the photographer and the guy behind the camera and the guy editing. I've really come to respect that even more so. Used to be, you know, you shoot a video and they go edit it somewhere in a dark room. I would never see it. But now I've watched guys using Media Composer and Final Mm -hmm. Cut. I'm like, wow. It's an art. It's just what I do with a song. It's exactly the same. And I think that is a key when we talked about value earlier. Can you make a living? Adding value is what we have come to represent in an era where there are so many pictures. Don't be excited. 
or don't be disappointed that there are so many pictures. Be excited because it means that people are more attuned to it and there's larger opportunity for you to stand out. Is it harder? Yes, that whole signal noise ratio thing. But if you are creating pictures that only you can make, then you're gonna make an impression. He, yep. You know, this is Sir Mix-a-Lot. He's telling you that you are at an elevated position post-internet than you were pre-internet. You were a part of the cog before, now you, you were a cog in the machine now. Now, in many ways, you can drive the machine. You can help shape the machine. They are the machine. Yeah, actually. because uh, because our world is so visual, yep. you know, and it's and sound bites are even long. A picture is, you know, they'll. And say, in an era when when people want pictures up like this, it, it helps to have somebody that knows what the hell they're doing. Because I'm just taking stuff. I I just took two pictures of your set, and threw it up on my Facebook, and then nobody knew what the hell it was, because I don't know how to take pictures. <laughs> they just saw a boom and a dude standing there and they thought he was taking a leap. They didn't, they're like, what is that? You know what I mean? So, Eric might have been. But. Yeah, he might have been. Good man. <laughs> um, man, no, seriously. So many, uh, so many great tweets coming in. Thanks for the life lessons. That's Alec Talk Photo. Um, a lot of, uh, Henry Alivet wants to retweet the quote, if I can't, I can't hit it if I can't reach it. A lot of people talking. Um, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show. It's it's yeah. not over, but I'm about to segue this thing into part two because um, we're right at the one hour mark right now. And over the next thirty to thirty minutes to an hour, what I hope to do is take a picture of your new album art. Get to watch you do your work. That's right. Yeah. You folks get to watch me work, and it's a bit like make, you know, like what uh, have on the sausage factory right there in front of you because you get to see it's not always pretty. Um, but I think many of you, that that's what you want to see. That's what you've told me over the last decade, and that's what we're continuing to, to do. We're, now we're just doing it live. So prepare for a little bit of chaos. Um, I'm going to uh, get up from this place right here with my man mix. We're going to unclip our labs, and we're going to go on to some shotgun mics. So the audio is going to change a little bit. Um, the Twitter is going to be hopefully even more live now in the next uh, hour than it has been, although they're coming in, you know, every yeah, 25 seconds tell right me, now. Man. Tell me something. Uh, we want to know what kind of clothes you want him to be wearing. I'll set the scene for you as soon as we pick his wardrobe. I'm not going to tell you the scene we're putting him in until we choose his clothes, which is a little bit backwards, I know, but bear with me. Um, from the giveaway, the signed Polaroid, um, we need to address that real quick. I'm going to do another one shortly, but it comes from, here we go, just a second. Where is it? Oh man, there's a lot of good ones here. I think I gotta go back. Uh, Henry Alva, I can't hit it if I can't reach it. Can't hit it if you can't reach it. And he's, he's tweeted out the, uh, the URL for the show. Henry, thank you very much. Um, send me a note offline. We'll make sure you get a signed Polaroid of one of the shots that I do with this man right here. Um, I'm gonna, actually, huge shout out to the people who are supporting the show. Um, Polaroid does a really good job of taking care of us, man. I'm in a, in a creative collaboration with those folks. They help bring this to you folks at home. Which, Look at the size of that thing, man. Yeah, this is, a lot of people were just paying attention to this fighter and installation I did in New York. This is called the Polaroid 600. I always take a picture on the show of my guest sitting right here. This is going to be one of the ones that will be given away. Um, give me just two seconds here. I got my exposure down. And I'm gonna sit How there. do you know you have your exposure right? What did you just, oh, I forgot he does this for right. a living. That's right, you sit right there. Oh, that's good. Mm. Did you just take a picture? Yep. Take that, we gotta wait. You know what we used to do? What's that? We used to take the Polaroid, because you know the, the myth was you had to shake them. Yep. And we used to go in strip clubs all the time, take pictures and then staple them to the chick's ass. Staples. And she would shake it like a Polaroid picture. All right, we're gonna wrap this segment up. Stay tuned. Thank you again, B&H, for all the, the uh, support here on the show as well. Big ups to Polaroid. Thank you for coming on my show, buddy. All right, I gotta, oh. give, me, I gotta give me a Polaroid okay. camera like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 there'll, there'll be so many pictures taken over the course of the next, uh, I, I should say we probably shoot a thousand pictures in the next No Anthony minutes. Weiner moments with that camera. I promise. That, you can't do it. It's, I know. You have I can to scan it. Who actually, uses a scanner anymore? You know, you just take a picture with the phone and then. Oh, no, I don't Yeah, do that. I know. It's gross. You think that's what he did? Um, 
join me over at your wardrobe closet, shall we? All right, ladies and gentlemen home, we bid you adieu. Keep the Twitter alive. It's hashtag CJ Live, hashtag mix and match. We'll pick his wardrobe. We're shooting his album cover art right now. And... Right now.